Hey, my name's Kieran, and I'm going to talk about maximum entropy image reconstruction in the context of radio astronomy. So we've talked about this a little bit in class, but just to really quickly recap, a radio telescope works by taking a Fourier transform of the sky. And this works because the sky itself has some true image, and the Fourier transform of that we call the visibility of the sky. But the way a radio telescope actually works, or at least an interferometer, is pairs of antennas are sensitive to a given spatial frequency. Really, the, the distance between the antennas in kind of x and y space from the perspective of the source is corresponding to a specific spatial frequency that pair is sensitive to. This is called the Van Sittard Zernike theorem, and it's an interesting proof if you want to get into it, um, but it basically shows this relationship. But the problem is, and they call this the imaging problem in radio astronomy, where the sky is a continuous function, and you would need you know, an infinite number of pairs of telescopes to capture all that information, and ones that are infinitely close together and infinitely far apart. So at the end of the day, you've sparsely sampled the actual spatial frequencies that correspond with the true image of the sky. So how do you fill in the gaps? How do you reconstruct an image that makes the most sense given the limited amount of data you have. This is the same as any compressive sensing problem, and of course we can solve it in the ways that we talked about in class. But the most popular method actually, and the first method, is one called CLEAN. This guy Hulkbaum came up with it in the early 70s, and it works by basically assuming the sky is composed of point sources, finding the brightest one, taking some fraction of it and convolving it with the point spread function of the telescope and then removing that result from your dirty map, which the dirty map is basically what you get if you put zeros in all the places that you don't know. And you just iteratively do that until you get to some noise floor. But the big problem with this is that kind the taking a point source and convolving it with the point spread function the only way that's efficient is by doing it with an FFT, and an FFT needs to be gridded. And the visibilities that you actually measured from your telescope, these pairs of antennas, the spatial frequencies you're sensitive to, are whatever they happened to be. You know, the pairs of antennas are at some location on Earth, and as the Earth rotates from the perspective of the source, you get some number, but they're not on a grid. So you need to put them on a grid, and that's the first really difficult computational task. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. The most popular way is basically blurring all the visibilities onto a grid with some Gaussian kernel. But the downside of this is if the visibilities had some statistics associated with them, you've smeared those statistics all over your scene. So the stats of your resulting model are kind of meaningless. And also the assumption that the thing you're looking at is a bunch of point sources isn't always valid. There's ways to get around this, but it's more complicated than is worth talking about. So what do you do? Well, you do the same thing we learned in class, where you regularize the inverse problem with some meaningful statistics. But unlike regular images, where the, we have known image statistics from like, you know, uh, conventional photography, astronomical sources are very varied. So how do you come up with something that is useful for everything? And that's where maximum entropy comes in. So uh, Jaynes in 1957 came up with this meta statistic of the entropy of a distribution. And what it really says is the distribution with maximum entropy is the one which makes the least number of assumptions about the thing it's trying to model. This is basically a mathematical implementation of Occam's razor. And this is useful for us because we can use this to regularize our image in that the pixels th values that we choose in the places that we don't know that correspond with some spatial frequencies we don't know we need to pick the ones that make the uh, least number of assumptions about the problem. We talked about this for the black hole imaging a little bit, where you don't want to impart your bias into it as much as you can avoid it. And so this form of entropy in the top right here is the original one from Jane's paper, actually, where if you assume each pixel value is a independent random variable, of course, he wasn't working with pixel values. It was like an information theory paper, um, but it's the same thing. It's a random variable. In, in this case, we're actually uh, regularizing the pixel to some prior image, so we can incorporate a prior if we have it. But usually you can just assume a flat image or a Gaussian or something, and it doesn't really change the result too much. It's just a speed of convergence thing. Um, but the other half of this problem is 
the model which you generate still needs to match your data. So the spatial frequencies of your model have to be the same. And you can just use a chi-squared goodness of fit test to do that. And then at the end of the day, you're left with this constrained nonlinear optimization problem where some model, image model you have, has to match the spatial frequencies which you measured and then maximizes this entropy term. This is the same as actually maximum likelihood because the probability of a given image is e to the power of the entropy, and because we normally work in log likelihood, the log and the e cancel each other out, and you're left with just maximizing the likelihood as just a, regu as a regularization term. And you solve this with normal gradient methods. Uh, Lagrange multipliers show up as these hyperparameters, alpha and beta, that you can just tune to get the design result. So I wrote this in Julia, which is a fantastic programming language, which everyone should be using. It's geared towards scientific computing. And the reason it's actually really well suited for this task is Julia has a feature called homoiconicity, which means the code of the language itself is something that you can manipulate as data. So you can write a program that operates on programs. For this purpose, because we're working in gradient descent land, you can actually write a program that spits out a program that is the derivative of your program. This is called automatic differentiation and actually is how all machine learning frameworks work nowadays. And it's really easy in Julia, uh, sh much easier than anything else out there. Beats TensorFlow and PyTorch by orders of magnitude. And here I am using it for uh, differentiate my regularization term. I added some other stuff in here that I'm actually not using in the results. Um, but you can just throw Julia code in it and call some AD backend. There's a bunch. I'm using Zygote here, and you just get a vector of the exact gradients. This is not finite differencing. This is the exact gradient. The small caveat with this is that you have to be using pure Julia. So if you call to any foreign function interface to C code or whatever, it's not going to work. And I actually lost a week on this trying to get the non-uniform FFT, which is what I'm using to sample the spatial frequencies of the model image. And it didn't work. <laughs> and so I had to explicitly provide the gradient for that, which is also an ill-posed problem. And I can talk about that if you're interested. Um, so here's some results of Sagittarius A, a popular model of Sag A. And if you just put zeros on all the things you don't know, you get this naive deconvolution in the middle, which doesn't look great. And then we get our nice maximum entropy reconstruction on the right. We can actually watch this train. On the left is just the data term, so not even looking at entropy. And you can see we actually get close. This is with a Gaussian prior, and that helped you know, more than just putting zeros in the places we don't know. But the entropy uh, maxent part obviously looks a lot better. And you can see it starts with the data term, kind of tapers out, and then I increase the value of the regularization of entropy right there, and then we fill in the gaps with this statistically meaningful information. So if you compare the same thing to clean, it, it's no comparison. I mean, this is a naive implementation of clean that I wrote. Um, you're supposed to have like weighting functions for these pixels and all sorts of stuff. But my maximum entropy implementation was also really naive. So if you're comparing apples to apples, this is, you know, no comparison and max sense way better. Um, I actually tried some other entropy terms. I mentioned like there isn't one real metric of the entropy of a distribution. There's different ones depending on the thing you're trying to talk about, generally speaking. The one in this example, or in the original example, was from a thermodynamic perspective. But this is another one, Berg, it's a paper, um, suffers from this vanishing gradient problem, which you can see we actually get the same kind of model of Sag A, and then it evaporates. And it looks cool, but is, you know, not what we want. Um, I tried M87, the famous image, um, and got a decent donut-y looking shape with the brightness on the bottom. But the uh, the problem here, I think, is the grid I'm rasterizing to is too coarse to get any of the wispy detail, if you really wanted to see the wispy detail. Um, and also, all these mix missing black pixels, is I wasn't using total variation or anything like that. This was just entropy and the data constraint. And it still worked, I say, pretty well. Um, I have some point sources and diffuse emission. You can see both, they look pretty good. And finally, some like real data of uh, 3C120, which is this radio jet, which doesn't look as good as the data online, but again, this is a naive implementation. And it was pretty good and it's pretty performant. So yeah, all in all, I'm actually pretty happy with uh, how this all turned out. And if anyone wants the code or uh, wants to talk about it more, uh, reach out. But yeah, thank you for your attention and um, I'll take any questions.